drop of rain. Let's see if it holds up. I guess today we learned about that new paradrone. The other day I was saying, is this like something related to hardware or is it data related? Because they seem to focus a lot on that. Well, this one here says, Parrot presents Anafi USA, designed for the US Army, made for enterprise. An ultra portable and ruggedized drone made in USA with a best in class 32 minute flight time for a 500 gram drone. An industry first 32 times zoom, 4K HDR video, and Fleur Boston thermal camera, and advanced data security. So this thing is not consumer oriented. It's definitely for things like the military and all that. Built to meet the demands of the first responders, firefighters, search and rescue teams, security agencies, and surveying and inspection professionals. I believe this drone, if you guys remember, there were a bunch of drone companies that won contracts to design, I suppose, drones for things like the military. So I guess this was their result. It's basically a modification or upgrade, whatever you want to call it, of their Anafi drone design. That thing is pretty light and portable, and to my understanding, it's really quiet. They also had some promotional videos of this drone and as you can imagine they basically focus on things like the 32 times zoom it's meant more for again like they say military search and rescue so that's probably really useful like a 32 times zoom from the looks of it it seems like it's digital because i wouldn't imagine like an optical zoom on the drone like this that's small that would be something huh it says for the package itself it has one Anafi USA drone, three smart batteries, one Sky Controller 3, one tablet holder, one multi-port fast USB charger, one additional set of propeller blades, four USB-A USB cables, and one hard case. There's no actual price on the site itself, so it makes you realize this is going to be really expensive. To my understanding, it's going to be about $7,000 US or so. They did mention how it's things like sand resistance after 13 hours. They show pictures and says the drone performed the sand test during 13 continuous hours. At the end of the test, the drone was still able to take off. Is that like the really stereotypical bases and stuff like that, like within deserts and all that? They did have a live webinar which basically discussed more in details about the drone and the strategy. I was just thinking too, because usually when there's a new launch, you have to filter through all these, I guess, paid reviews. People say, oh, this thing is the best ever. This one is like so corporate. Um, the, um, I'm a software guy, so it's, um, it's a bit difficult for hardware. It's always a bit difficult for me. I suppose that could be good in many ways because you could say they're giving you everything as is in a transparent manner, no marketing hype and all that. And with this drone itself, I guess in terms of strategy and design, basically it is focused on things such as your data is secured, I guess, versus things like say, the scare in the US with Chinese made drones, like they want to get rid of them. And when it comes to things like US government operations. So like even on their site, it says trusted and secure. Anafi USA puts security first for professional users. Photos and videos are encrypted on its SD card using an AES XTS algorithm with a 512 bit key length. Anafi USA's secure digital SD card encryption feature ensures that saved data cannot be read if the drone or SD card is lost or stolen. So there's a lot of interesting details on the video. For example, people asking, does the Anafi USA contain any Chinese made parts? Now, according to them, all the essential components are not from China. So things like, for example, the processor and most importantly, the operating system and stuff like that. It's basically either all USA or European made or the parts came maybe from Japan. They said the only thing that has like Chinese made parts, according to them, were things like plastics and all that. So every essential component is basically non-Chinese made, which I guess is one of the big points on why they got funding and so forth to make this drone. So with that thought, they actually go on like a full aggressive attack against DJI. It makes me wonder how they are going to respond to this because some of them are actually kind of interesting when you think about it. For example, one of the points that they mentioned about their software, like the Parrot, that everything is transparent. You can see everything as is. So if you have any questions, just look at all the coding and so forth. Whereas they're claiming people like DJI, they don't do that, which makes it a little dubious, like in their opinion. Like it says here, when it comes to, I guess, DJI, they did things like research to say our drones don't send data. And they have like all these slide presentations that says, we don't believe it is the case for DJI drones. For example, the last available risk assessment on DJI drones was carried out by Booz Allen Hamilton in March 2020 on behalf of Precision Hawk. This study concluded that there is no data leak with DJI drones. The study was not made public until June 9. 
Why? On May 12th, the company Riverloop Security, specialized in IoT cybersecurity, reported a major data leak to MobTech, a Chinese data intelligence platform, with version 4.3.26 of DJI Go, DJI silently removed the use of MobTech spotted by Riverloop Security. And they just keep going. It says here, Booz Allen Hamilton reports at the start of their study that they perform, quote, limited testing, no customized exploits, and very difficult to verify custodianship of any data when using cloud-based services. How can a study carried out in March claim on June 9 that there are no data leaks in DJI software while DJI suppressed some of them on May 12th? This is a sign, as BAH rightly says, that their study is only based on limited testing. There are other examples of DJI's data leakage methods as soon as they have been detected. So yeah, they're going on a full-on attack to add more fuel to the fire, huh? On that notion that Chinese drones and so forth, they're spying on you. Their software has all these malicious codes sending data back to, I guess, Communist Party and stuff like that. Would you actually believe that in this case? Or would you say, nope, it's just basically people bashing their competitors? And since this drone is so expensive with all that thermal camera stuff, people ask, can we expect a consumer version as well? According to them, nope. This is 100% enterprise solution, I guess you could say. And again, for things like military and government use. So obviously this isn't meant for consumers and it's not going to be like a cinematic powerhouse or anything like that. But it makes you wonder if a company like this is going to win all those contracts and all that, selling it to major governments and military, is that going to give them the resources to develop something crazy, I guess you could say, in the future for the consumer? As well, I'm curious to see if DJI actually responds to stuff like this. It'll be kind of interesting. I guess the gloves are off. Like everyone's going after them in a sense because they are basically the leader when it comes to consumer drones. How about for the regular public in general? Does this make you, I guess, more siding towards some, using something like a Parrot drone, for example? Or would you still be inclined to use something like a DJI? Any changed opinions? accidental surprise with the rain and sun.
Alright, see you guys later.